Hello, and welcome to the Mobile User Acquisition Show, a podcast to help you unlock tremendous growth for your app. My name is Shaman Rao. I'm the CEO of the boutique growth marketing firm, Rocketship HQ, and host of the podcast, Mobile User Acquisition Show. In each episode, we feature experts in the field of mobile growth and discuss strategies, tips, and pointers from the leading edge of mobile growth marketing. By the end of each episode, you will have gained actionable and tactical insights that will help you make more informed decisions in your own work around growth. The Mobile User Acquisition Show is produced by Meryl Vincent, Content Marketing Manager at Rocketship HQ. One of the reasons why the performance of many ad networks post ATT, particularly for games, has been relatively strong is that they have relied on what has been called probabilistic matching, which is effectively device fingerprinting to measure performance and to optimize campaign performance. First, uh, let's understand what device fingerprinting is of probabilistic matching is and how it works. Uh, probabilistic matching or device fingerprinting looks at specific data points on a user's device, including IP address, free storage, battery level, volume level, et cetera, by looking at a combination of these data points, an ad network SDK can identify a device in a way that is nearly unique. And uh, how does this happen and how does this allow tracking, right? An ad network SDK could basically say, hey, this is a device that is an iPhone 13 running on iOS 16 from IP address XYZ, uh, battery level 90% at such and such a time. Let's call this device ABC. I see the device ABC with these specific characteristics, saw an ad impression today. And I also noticed that a device with very similar characteristics or the exact same characteristics made an install and a first purchase today. Therefore, I can say with reasonable confidence that the device that saw the ad is the same as the device that installed and the device that made a purchase. Therefore, I'm gonna attribute this install and this purchase to this campaign. And I'm also going to try to target more users with the same device characteristics as this particular device as they're more likely to purchase. So that is how device fingerprinting or probabilistic matching has worked. And because of this, probabilistic matching has attained stronger measurement and performance than scan, which does not allow this kind of profiling and targeting. But this probabilistic party is going to end soon. Why? Because of the privacy manifest that Apple introduced in this year's WWDC. What are privacy manifests? A privacy manifest is a file that will have four subsections. One is NS privacy tracking. Uh, this is a yes or no Boolean, which is does an app or SDK use data for tracking as defined by Apple. Second, and it's privacy tracking domains. These are domains or SDKs in an app that engage in tracking as defined by Apple. If a user has not consented to the ATT prompt, any network requests to these will not go through. Important to note. Number three, and it's privacy data collected data types. These, this is about the types of data collected by the app or SDK. The fourth is NS privacy accesses API tribes. API types. Uh, these are the APIs accessed by an app or SDK that are restricted or require reasons to access this data, right? So as you can tell, this is very much a privacy profile of an SDK, uh, which is present in this file that is called the privacy manifest. How does the skill fingerprinting? Now, Apple is also going to announce a new list of third-party SDKs that it calls privacy impacting SDKs, which must include a privacy manifest file and a code signature from the SDK developer, right? And these are very likely ad network SDKs that have already done some kind of probabilistic matching and they have to include a privacy manifest file where they have to declare why they're accessing this device data, this fingerprinting data. So 
if you have an ad network that is ad network SDK that is deemed by Apple to be privacy impacting, they have to be declaring why they're accessing this data. So obviously the onus is on the SDK to report truthfully and technically they could lie about their reasons for accessing the data. You know, they could say, oh, they're ac accessing battery levels or OS versions for personalizing the user experience and not for user, not for ad targeting, but they are accountable for consequences. And so are you as a developer uh, that is using this SDK and the consequences could include rejection of the app from the app stores. If, uh, according to Apple's documentation, and I'm quoting, uh, if you determine that the domains your app connects to are using data sent from your app to track people, declare them in, in your privacy manifest and ask for, for permission to track under the app tracking transparency framework. Yes, so you can track these users via these SDKs if the users have consented. The other section of the, the Apple's documentation is the operating system blocks network requests to declared tracking domains when the user has not granted tracking permission, which means if a user has opted out, the operating system is going to block any requests that these SDKs are going to send out. All of this is to say that is the, if there is an SDK that is declaring manif privacy manifests as doing probabilistic fingerprinting, then it's not going to work uh, if it tries to track opted out users uh, as it might be doing just now, right? Uh, you're not even gonna be technically able to track these users. And uh, of course the SDK could lie in its privacy manifest, it could declare incorrectly. It could say, hey, I'm not actually doing tracking while, while I am, then there is a chance the app could get disapproved. Right, especially if the app is deemed to be private, if, if the SDK is deemed to be privacy impacting. And if you are a marketer uh, that is currently relying on probabilistic matching based SDKs, you should start making contingency plans. You don't have to switch to scan overnight on all your channels, but you should be prepared to do that whenever this particular acts falls. Scan is imperfect, scan is messy, but it's the best safe alternative for now. For more tips, pointers, and strategies from the leading edge of mobile user acquisition, subscribe to our YouTube channel right here or check out our blog, rocketshiphq.com slash blog.